This is John Pluta, GeorgiaBees.com. I'm in Eatonton, Georgia. What we're going to do today, I'm fixing to empty a few pollen traps. I'm at a small little bee yard. What I was going to do is show you how pollen varies uh, in color and the amount per hive. I did a quick little spot check first, and I noticed that uh, one hive, uh, one trap is uh, extremely low. That normally means there's problems with hives. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and, uh, well, first of all, what we do is we have pollen traps on the bottoms of the hives. They have to be nice, big, strong hives. They have to be at least two brood chambers high. And this is the fall. The goldenrod it has pretty much played out, but we do have other various fall weeds and flowers blooming, asters and other, other things. Just looking at the front of this hive right here, I can see pollen coming in on the back of legs already. So I, I know the traps are working well. What I'm going to do is just pull out and just to show you the color, I'm just going to lay them out on the ground real quick. Also, I'll sh I'll, just what I just saw right there, we'll show you what, what, one of the other things when you trap pollen, you find out whether you have high beetle problems real quick. They just love the pollen. So normally what I do, I just smash them real fast and get them out of there. I can already see some small variance in the color. This is the hive right here that I noticed. It has very little, if any. This means we probably have a problem. Or another thing that, that you know, if you have a low collection, that means you, what I call a leaker. That means you have a hole in one of the hives somewhere. What we do quite often is anytime we find holes, good old duct tape, anytime you have holes and cracks and crevices, the bees will bypass those very, very rapidly. These are some kind of nasty hives right here, so I'm going to try and stay away from those ones. One more. This is one I just put on. It's only a two-story high, but the, as you can see, it's doing fairly well. It's a pretty good strong hive. When the bees fly out, a lot of times, it all depends on whether they're going to fly east, north, south, or west, what they're going to get. This hive right here, they were getting a lot of black, a lot of that's grass pollen. This one here is predominantly white. But prior to drying, we just mix and blend them all together. And I was just, just doing this to show you how much uh, variance there can be per hive. This is seven pollen traps. This is just one day's worth. We do that, we collect, we collect this every day, close to dark. Sun's fixing to go down, so we just come out and when it's damp, we kind of just brush the pollen off. I need to get these back on the hives as quick as possible. As, as we're bringing in, the pollen will be falling straight down onto the floor of the hive. This is very damp right here on this particular batch. Sorry for the bounce around on the video. But 
then you have, here's another one we, we, we have duct tape on. All these traps here, we also uh, you can also see in the wintertime, we're, we're getting close to fall. This is propolis where they're starting to seal the hives up. And almost all my hives right now, we have propolis traps on them. I'm getting off my uh, subject here, but uh, just showing that real quick. All these hives here, these are propolis traps we have on with the bottom boards reversed. This allows uh, air to get in there and pisses the bees off where they seal up with uh, propolis. We'll have to do a video for this on you someday. Here, here you can see a good sight of the uh, propolis being uh, filled into the uh, trap. The, the bees work at both sides. When you have the when you have the top reversed, the bees fill up from, from top and bottom. This is a nice collection right here. This right here, this would fill about two of my uh, fourteen dollar bottles. So that's about thirty dollars worth of pollen right there. This makes beekeeping fun. And then here we have another small high beetle down here. I'll smash him. Kind of just keep an eye out for them. Got two more to go. I'm trying to hold the camera and do this at one time, which is uh, a little challenging. This little particular bee yard just next to a little hay, a, a hay field with a uh, hardwood forest around it. Here in Georgia, that's where we get most of our pollen from is our trees. This time of year. Well, actually, I take that back. It's mostly grasses and weeds. All right. This is my collection for the day. We have about a gallon and a half of pollen right here, which we were going to take it back and we spread it out. We always get a few ants in there. Ants love the protein pollen, miscellaneous bugs and varmints. We, we'll get out of there. I see very few hive beetles, which is, which is very promising. Collecting pollen is a basically a full-time job. If you don't collect it every day, and you have some rains and high humidity, you're going to have one big caked up mess on the bottom of these traps. But by having the traps, it will allow you to uh, judge the health from the outside. And then right here, I always take a look. I'm seeing some uh, bees bypassing the trap right here. Actually, I just saw a pollen, uh, bee with pollen right there. So since we have a uh, second left, but I can't find my darn hive tool. When you're trapping pollen, you, you have to make sure all the hives are bee tight. I'm going to close this up as good as I can. Probably get the crap stung out of me here, but... Uh, that's a little example of how we trap pollen. It's a good collection. We'll make, make, make good money off it. It's mostly just getting a uh, market for it. Trap a little pollen high in protein. Georgia Bees. John Pluto, GeorgiaBees.com.